Ladies and gentlemen, the graduation ceremony will begin shortly. Please switch off your handphones or put them on silent mode if you haven't done so. We have arranged for official photographers to take photos of all graduates receiving their diplomas. There is no need to come to the front to take the photographs during the ceremony. If you wish to take additional photos, you may do so after the ceremony at the plaza. I will be inviting you to stand when the academic procession enters and leaves the convention hall. Graduates, please ensure that you have your admission ticket and identity card with you before joining the queue to receive the scroll box on stage. You will be issued with a card logon ID and password as you leave the stage. Please keep the card as you will need it to place your orders for photos. Lastly, graduates, graduation is a formal occasion. Please show your respect for our guests and fellow graduates in your behavior. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our guest speaker, Mr. Mohammed Farhan bin Mohammed Firdaus, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the 58th graduation ceremony of the Singapore Polytechnic. At this second session, we will be presenting diplomas and other awards to graduates from SB Business School. May I now invite our principal and chief executive officer, Mr. So Waiwa, to deliver the graduation address. Mr. So, please. Mr. Muhammad Fan, being Muhammad Fadaz, the group general manager of Suristin Group of Companies, Suristin Holdings. Distinguished guests, parents, graduates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to our 58th graduation ceremony. This year we have 5,263 students graduating from Singapore's first polytechnic. I congratulate all graduates, and in particular, the 276 of you here with us this afternoon to receive your certificates. Now, founded in 1954, SB's first graduate received his diploma in 1961 at the graduation ceremony first held in Victoria Theatre. Subsequently, we have commemorated our 50,000 graduate in 1990, our 100,000 graduate in year 2000, our 150,000 graduate in 2010. And this year, we celebrate achieving the milestone of graduating our 200,000 graduate. We've come a long way. We're the first polytechnic and among the first few institutes of higher learning to, able, to be able to make this proud declaration. To the graduates assembled here today, all of you can be proud and honoured to be part of this 200,000 strong network of illustrious men and women who, like you, enter, gate, enter the gates of SP, but they have gone on to help build Singapore over the last six decades. Some of these illustrious SP alumni include, from the earliest cohorts, veteran architect Mr. Tan Cheng Xiong, who pioneered residential typologies in Singapore. And his iconic projects include the Perbank Apartments, the Pandan Valley Condominium. He was conferred the President's Design Award in 2012. From the 1980s, we have our current chairman of the Singapore Poly Board of Governors, Mr. Bill Chang. He's the CEO Group Enterprise of Singtel. Not only does he play a major role in the development of the IT industry in Singapore, through his position in Singtel, he also co-chairs the Future Jobs and Skills Subcommittee of the Committee for the Future Economy set up by the Singapore government. In recognition of his contributions to Singapore, Bill was awarded the Public Service Star in 2017. We have also an accomplished scientist in our alumni family. He's Dr. Jonathan Lowe, who is the Senior Principal Investigator at the Institute of Molecular and Cell Biology. He, this 1997 graduate is the first Singaporean to be elected to the elite global world technology network in 2012 because of his work with stem cells. Now, I hope that all the graduates today will draw inspiration from this outstanding alumni and continue the SP tradition of powering Singapore's development and transforming the country towards a strong economy and a caring society. 
to help you carry the SP alumni mentor to renew the country and thrive in this era of constant technological change. Singapore Poly has transformed ourselves. We now become a polytechnic not just for teenagers, but a polytechnic for all ages. We have committed ourselves to be your lifelong partner beyond your graduation, lifelong partner in learning. Through our continued education programs for adults, we will help you upgrade and further develop your skills at different stages in your life. These programs cover not just your areas of specialization, but we also cover generic ones, such as entrepreneurship. All of you will find these programs helpful as you face a volatile, uncertain, and complex and ambiguous environment, always subject to technological disruption. Beyond what you have received these last three years, you need to constantly learn, unlearn, and relearn. So, your graduation today is but the beginning of a long-term relationship with Singapore Polytechnic. So, graduates, as I once again extend my congratulations, I say to you not just goodbye, but also see you again on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker this afternoon is Mr. Mohammed Farhan bin Mohammed Firdaus, Group General Manager of Saracen Group of Companies, Saracen Holdings. Mr. Mohammed Farhan is in charge of business development and business operations corporate affairs and communications, sustainability and data protection. He is an experienced corporate manager and advisor with a demonstrated history of working in general management for the private and people sector for fast growth and established organizations. Mr. Mohammed Farhan has received several awards and special mention from the Prime Minister of Singapore, President of Singapore, Minister of State for Trade and Industry, Singapore, Minister of Thailand, and Advisor of GIC, a Fellow of the Company of Good under the National Volunteer Philanthropy Center, Mr. Mohammed Farhan is recognized as a business professional who is committed to sustainable practices in business and corporate giving. An alumni of SP, Mr. Mohammed Farhan has a heart for youth and is active in grassroots and community circles, nurturing and inspiring youth from all walks of life. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Mohammed Farhan bin Mohammed Firdaus to deliver the graduation address. Mr. Mohammed Farhan, please. Sorry. Good afternoon, Principal, Mr. So Waiwa, Director, Ms. Tan Yen Yen, parents, graduates, teachers, and distinguished guests. It gives me great pleasure to be here today at the Singapore Polytechnic's 58th graduation ceremony. Please allow me to applaud all graduates and award winners from the business school on your achievements. I hope that given having been educated in SP for the last three years, you feel that you have grown as a person and, and an, as an individual and have obtained important skills to equip you for the future. Well, I hope this is true. If not, fret not, I'm here to help. I'm glad to have the privilege to speak to you today as your graduation speaker. Well, my intention today is to share with you my story and not just my story, but the story of others who have succeeded to provide you with a little yardstick, right? A good head start for your next journey. Now, you must be wondering why and how I came to SP, Singapore Poly. Well, in 2007, I chose to study business 
in Singapore Polytechnic after graduating from ITE because it is no secret that our Polytechnic is the most established, right? And also at that time, which was about 11 years ago, it was the only Polytechnic apart from Nanyang that was close to an MRT, okay? <laughs> so this is my little secret. But as I look back at my decision to study in SP 11 years ago, and being a corporate executive today with Seristin Group of Companies, which is a regional business consortium that is involved in a multitude of sectors of the economy, the decision to enroll in our School of Business was a correct decision that I made. The school had provided me with a solid foundation which I would continue to build on towards further education and through my career. So even though it has been almost a decade, some of the modules learned in school still contribute towards guiding me in my day-to-day -day business decisions. Let me offer you some examples. So, of which one is a module by Mr. George Teo, which was on, you know, having experience in business. So, for example, if you have a plate of chicken rice, right, you don't just offer chicken rice. It shouldn't only taste good, but it should also smell good, it should also look good, right, and the packaging and so on. Moving on to another module, right, which is business development, which I had the privilege to learn from Ms. Cynthia Lam. It's basically about two key things, which is your business model and your business plan. Your business model may be a very good one in Singapore, but it might not work in other countries, say Indonesia or Philippines. And of course, the last one is, uh, well, I used to call her Miss OK, Olivia Ko, right? So uh, it's her logistic supply chain modules where I learned the bread and butter of supply chain terminologies like FOB, CIF, and, you know, although I'm not directly handling it today, but my staff do, but it is important and it has provided me a foundation of which I know how to make decisions with. So these are just to name a few. All modules are important, right? So while I enjoyed most of my modules, there were some that I struggled with, such as statistics and calculus. You're looking at a guy here who came from O-levels and I got E8 for math, right? So you can, you can guess. So it was challenging for me. Well, in general, school was enjoyable because I also participated in a few CCAs, became president of two clubs. SP Photography Club, and I was also president of the SP Ambassadors. I'm not too sure if it's still here, right? And I was also a student leader for Mr. George Teo's Youth Expedition Project that brought me to Thailand in 2008, right? So these were one of the most memorable, and, and just to share, until today, I'm still leading Youth Expedition Project, and I was uh, recognized by Minister of Education. So again, SP provided me with the foundation. So I think what was important as well when I was studying was my internship at the Kindness Movement, which until today, I'm still very close friends with my former supervisors. So I graduated in 2010 with the SP Model Student Award, and also, you know, to, uh, I also received an academic prize by the TNT Worldwide Logistics uh, for being one of the top three students. So at the end of the day, I didn't get a certificate of merit, right? But I was satisfied nonetheless with my effort and performance that I've put in through my three years. Because the most important thing here, and even for you today, is that you must know that you've given your best. And I truly enjoyed my learning experiences in SP. That's the most important. Today is one of the most special days of your life, and I want you to be successful in the future. So I'll use this opportunity to share my quotes of success, which is my four basic principles, which I hope that you as my friends here will also apply these basic principles when you either continue with your education or you join the workforce, right? Or it could be both. So let's begin with the four basic principles. Firstly, have a positive mindset. It is important as it enables you to take failure as part of the process, enables you to be self-motivated, and is the fuel to make you a determined person. To be honest, I have never met a person who is successful who is not positive. In life, you will have both moments of success and failure, right? So know this, every time you face a setback, there is a solution somewhere, and you must pick yourself up and stand tall and keep walking. Sometimes there's no other way, you just got to keep walking. So know this as well, whatever route you take after this is ultimately a route 
Not all routes are suitable for everyone. We all have to go on this journey at a pace we are comfortable with. Your poly results do not define you. The Polytechnic is supposed to be a place where you learn the foundation of business and grow. A good example to illustrate this is a friend of mine, Mr. Farid MN, who is the president director of a fast-growing fintech company in Indonesia. He's Singaporean, by the way. And his company is called Wallet Coup, which literally translated my wallet. He is on the board of governors of Nanyang Polytechnic. And prior to his current accomplishments, Farid was a member of the board of directors for the civil service college. Now, Farid took a different route. You know, for someone of his accomplishments, you'd think he'd be, you know, a, a, a different um, route, you know. But what he did was, he took a different route, and it was his positive mindset that got him to where he is today. So after his polytechnic studies, he worked for several companies and pursued further studies before becoming an entrepreneur. He had accumulated a lot of experience along the way, but one of the determining factors of his success is his thirst for success and determination. Now, this is evident because he was taking his PSLE and he failed twice. He didn't really do well in secondary school and he wasn't going to let his failures define him. His positive mindset kept him going and going. He was unfettered as failures came and left. He wasn't going to let his past experience prevent him from reaching his goals. He learned from his mistakes and focused on reaching the destination. To sum up this point, the British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. For the second principle, know that your diploma is not the end of your learning journey. Whether you choose to pursue your bachelor's degree straight after graduation or you decide to gain some valuable work experience first, well, please know that learning doesn't stop. Reason being, the world we live in today has an economy that moves very fast at a fast pace and is changing at a fast pace as well due to disruptions in most aspects of the economy. We've seen how transportation has been disrupted with Uber and Grab. There's no more Uber, right? How we eat has changed due to Uber Eats, Honest Bee and Food Panda. How food is farmed has changed through Agritech with companies like Plenty, Freight Farms and Frontier Agrotech. How people live is being changed with PropTech, co-living spaces and co-working spaces. How we transact economically and financially is also quickly being transformed by the fintech industry, blockchain technology, e-wallets, cryptocurrency, and with the introduction of artificial intelligence and all the disruptions I've mentioned above, provide opportunities only if we are willing to learn about it and adapt. If we don't embrace these changing technologies, my friends, we will be left behind. So we can learn through self-learning by reading books, attend short courses and trainings or seminars, or even skills future programs. A good example is my entrepreneur friend, Mr. Shafiq Yusuf, who is CEO of Riverwood Logistics. For Shafiq, even though he has little formal qualifications, learning doesn't stop for him. Shafiq is probably one of the few friends I have in the industry who has a ferocious appetite for learning. He attends courses, seminars, adult learning workshops on a regular basis. Shafiq started building his logistics company seven years ago after a failed business. And when he did, he was up against big boys like FedEx, UPS, DHL, YCH and so on. But what sets him apart from everyone else was that he was very observant of changing technologies and was willing to integrate it into his business and he made his then small business into a very competitive one by adopting new technologies. And he customized solutions for his customers. His business strategies and practices were highly praised by Amazon Prime that his company was awarded the main distributorship rights in Singapore. And now Shafiq is in the process of expanding Riverwood Logistics Services in Japan to support the demand for the halal supply chain during the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Such a visionary he is. I'm not sure if he wants me to share this, but to prepare him for the upcoming business expansion, Shafiq and his team have been picking up Japanese as well so that they'll be fully ready for the business in Japan. This is an example of lifelong learning. He was mentioned by PM Lee Sen Long in his National Day Rally and last year. So with the story and example above, it is apparent that the only thing that is constant is change. So it is important to keep ourselves up to date with economic and technological developments. 
As Anthony G. D'Angelo once said, develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Now, on my third principle, this is the third of the four principles. Huh? Okay, so on the third principle, it is about effort. May I remind you again that you reap what you sow, right? So if you are a farmer and you decide to plant chili in the fields, in seven to eight weeks later with constant watering, you will get chilies, right? But if you don't plant anything, nothing will grow. So in order to be successful in whatever you do, you must first put in the effort. Winston Churchill once said, continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. You just got to go on and go on and never give up. Now to my last and final principle. The fourth principle is to build mastery. The job market today has changed from the time when I was a student like you in the Polytechnic. Today, further studies is definitely important, but skills is also as important. Employers prefer students that are job ready. Hence, we see an influx of employees in the industry who choose to work and study concurrently. We also see this trend when employers are hiring for middle to senior management with significant relevant experience and achievements. Remember, my friends, we live in a global world. You can easily get a job overseas and expatriates from overseas can easily access jobs in Singapore. If we're not good at what we do, someone else will take our place. Hence, we must build mastery. Make sure that we're outstanding to the point that we become specialists in our field that we become highly sought after by employers, not only in Singapore, but also in the region. In all that you do, give your best. Be the best that you can be, the best entrepreneur, the best accountant, the best consultant, and so on. Trust me, you won't have a problem finding a job or getting a promotion as you bring great value to yourself, the organization you work for, and to your industry. A good example I want to highlight is Mr. Mark Tan, who graduated from our polytechnic about the same time as I did. He was from the other school, uh, Diploma in Business IT, I think. He took on his first job in the banking and finance industry in 2011, while at the same time pursuing his degree on a part-time basis. Mark grew his experience in the banking and finance industry, working for global banks and financial institutions like UOB Kehien, Western Union, Standard Chartered Bank, etc accumulating close to a decade of experience and was recently promoted to senior manager. I found this to be very good and I have commended him for it because I seldom see this sort of rich industry experience in our local workforce, especially in business. And I see a lot of jack of all trades when I review resumes. So I certainly applaud Mark for it. The top talents from overseas are like Mark. They have both rich experience and international experience. I have no doubt that if Mark keeps it up and applies the four basic principles that I've shared with you, he will realize some of his life's ambitions before he turns 40. He's about 31 now. Yeah? So, my friends, we have come to the last part of my speech. Know this, no man is an island. We need each other to learn and grow. And nobody has truly achieved success without the help of others. So, once you join the industry, I encourage you to network with other people within or outside of your industry. I'd like to end with a quote by Conrad Hilton. Success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. So start taking action of your life today with my four basic principles. Number one, have a positive mindset. Number two, adopt a lifelong learning attitude. Number three, put in all your effort. And of course, last but not least, number four, achieve mastery in all that you do. I am confident that all of you will achieve success in your life. Well, as the saying goes, you only live once, YOLO. So make the best of your life and define your own success. I extend my heartiest congratulations once again to all of you on the successful completion of your studies at the Singapore Polytechnic School of Business and wish each and every one of you every success in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad Farhan.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the presentation of diplomas to the graduates. This afternoon, we will be presenting diplomas and other awards to 276 graduates from SP Business School. May I now call upon the director of SP Business School, Ms. Tan Yen Yen, to present the diplomas. Ms. Tan, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates for the Diploma in Business Administration. Ao Wan Xin. <laughs> Chong Hui Ying Stephanie. <laughs> Is Arshad bin Mohammad Taha. J.C. Tay Shi Ying James Mark Lee Sin Ying Lin Zhi Feng Brandon Rafiq Haris bin Hanafi Tidar Soe To Pei Li Akanas Vincent Joshua de la Cruz Aline Lim Sin Ying Alicia Aziz Alkaf Alicia Tay Sin Ni Amanda Tan Wei Ti Ambika Tamil Mani Andy Lim Ping Sin Angela Callista Hadi Besson Go Jin Pin Bo Pei Shi Bradley Yo Kian Tai Ming En Kalaunan Alexander Junior Sumampong Carmen Ong Cecilia Kim Ji Wee Chang Hui Sin Joycelyn Charlotte Chua Xiaomin Charmaine Teo Chelsea Sim Wee Shan Chen Yu Wen Tina Chen Cheryl Wong Qi Yin Chia Wei Jing Vanessa Cho Jia Hui Hannah Chu Wen Chi Chu 
Chu Shi Guang Brian Chao Wei En Chua Pei Ying Cheryl Sheena Ng Clarissa Ariel Chong Ching Yi Crystal To Yi Shan Darren Bei Biao Zhi Diana Ng Siok King Dylan Ong Jin Jie Elizabeth Wu Jia Yi Eric Ko Wei Bin Fan Kai Ming Fu Chuan Shao Fu Zhonghui Elizabeth Go Li Ying Olina Go Xin Rui Grace Lim En Hui Heng Jing An Ho Gerald Ho Jin Kiet Aloysius Ho Yu Hui Irfan Ong Jazz Li Yu Ting Janice Tan Tian Ai Jermaine Hong Jesse Lam Wen Jing Caden Ko Wei Zhe Kalin Che Kitty Tan Jia Yi Lam Pei Wun Jesslyn Li En Yi Carice Li Jia Lin Li Jing Yi Jini Li Si En Justin Lester Lau Chong Han Leong Shu Jin Lim Hui Wen Lim Kai En Edwin Lim Ryan Lim Si Hui Lim Sin Ying Claire Lim Yun
Lo Jia Hui Cheryl. Lo Xin Yi. Lo Gui Xian Chelsea. Lo Yun Zhe. Lui Yu Qi. Mabel Ko Wen Ting. Muhammad Daniel bin Fadeli. Ng Yi Ping. Ng Jing Hing. Nur Adlina Shafika Binte Nordin. Nur Amalina Binte Mohammad Nordin. Nur Maishara Binte Zul Hidayat. Nurul Shifa Binte Mohammad Pauzi. O Jen Wen Jeremy Ong Kai Jie Ong Kai Jie Ong Ning Hui Ao Yong Jian Wei Pauline Ko Hua Wei Jing Edith Felicia Yo Rachel Ko Wei Lin Rina Leong Shaw Yi Roxanne Mo Jia Yu Rukoya Binte Maslan Ryona Han Sin Yi Sabelle Chong Xue Ting Sarah Tan Min Yi Si Wei Ling Xiu Wen Sing Felicia Sharony Chu Shemaine Su Yi Fang Xiao Boon Kit Siti Shabira Binte Abu Talib So Chi Wei So Walter So Yen Jia Brian Sumnima Rai Shadina Naura Binte Mustamam Syed Muhammad Ahmad Jailani Bin Shamsurizal Tan Chun Sang Tan 
Tan Huang Nin. Tan Jie Ro. Tan Le Ming Brandon. Tan Ming Xia. Tan Po Lai Richmond. Tan Tin Ru Felinda. Tan Wei Tong. Tan Xin Ti Cindy. Tan Xin Wei. Tan Yi Kai Angus. Tan Yi Min. Tan Yi Fei. Tan Yu Lin. Tan Zi Ting. Tang Kun Mun Tobias. Tae Yi Ting. Tae Yong Yun Felicia. Tae Guan Yu. Tae Jia Yi. Tio Jin Kai. Tio Kai Ling. Tio Pei Kim Amanda. Tiffany Tae Yu Jie. Timothy Lim Ming Tzu. To Ben Hun Javier. To Ling Hui. Tong Pei Min Felicia. Vivian Ang Hui Ting. Vivian Tio Hui Min. Vivian Tio Hui Min. Wasima Sanofa Fatima Binte Mohamed Yaya. Wee Jia Chi. Wong Hong Zheng. Wong Zi Chen. Wong Yong Jian Johan. Wa Sin Yi. Xiao Yu Jia. Yap Kai. Yo Kai Wen. Zhao Yu Bo. Zhu Li Yun.
Sun Miet Noe. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates for the Diploma in Business Innovation and Design. Fo Kai Ling Geraldine. Abdul Matin Bin Sapie. Adam Lo It Hap. Ao Yong Jin Hong. Chan Yen Ling. Chiang Li Sin. Chia Wen Chi. Claudia Joy Lim. Ho Jin Yi James. Ho Sin Ru Celine. Huang Ming Xiang. Janine Ng Yo En. Jaslyn J. Binte Abdullah. Kenny Setiawan Chandra. Kitty O. Ching Hui. Ko Hui Min Karina. Chris Zen Ao Ke Xian. Quan Wing Chong Tommy Lim Li Xuan Clara Lim Wei Tin Lin Tun To Lo Zi Ying Joey Naga Lakshmi Duraisami Nicholas King Zhang Yi Nur Zafira Begum Aslam Khan Nian Mei Tet Aung Tashnimi Bivi Binte Mohammed Hussein Tiffany Teng Yu Lin Wong Ming Jie Wong Xiao Qi Yang Chuan Yi Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates for the Diploma in International Business. Lim Chan Li Annie Ng Li Wun Crispin Andreas Dang Gya Han Elvis Wang Kai Chun Go Jin Wei Joel He Siu Ji Huang Yu Xin
Jewel Yu Kare. Joel Li Shi Yao. Julius Ku Kahin. Ku Jing Xuan Xavier. Lao Shu Fang Emily. Li Yan Cheng. Li Zhen Wei. Lu Jin De. Min Tit Seng. Muhammad Afik Fawaz bin Ramat. Nabila binti Shaiful Bahari. Ong Yu Jia. Wee Yi An Evangel. Pio Min Tun Shamin Christabel Ong Yi Ting Tan Li Lin Tan Rachel Ting Hao Wei Tung Caleb To Emmanuel Winston Beck Kwang Wong Yang Chen Yun Wei Yi Chen Wei Yi Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the list of graduates from the SP Business School. Thank you, Ms. Tan. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the prizes to our graduates for their excellent academic performance. May I invite Mr. Mohammed Farhan bin Mohammed Firdaus, Group General Manager of Seristine Group of Companies, Seristine Holdings, to present the following prizes. Mr. Mohammed Farhan, please. From the Diploma in Business Administration course, the Scantic Prize, Ho Lan Tian. <laughs> Receiving the Expeditors Singapore Prizes are Joey Kwa. Oh Hui Yi and Tan Hui Ting. Receiving the cheers prizes are D. 
Dennis Lum Tsihao. Tan Yu Chen. The Singapore Logistics Association Prize, Sim Wen Chi. The Hay Diaries Prize, Daphne Yap Lee Singh. From the Diploma in Business Innovation and Design course, the Blue Can Business Innovation Prize, Nicholas Tan Jun Hao. From the Diploma in International Business course, the Maple Tree Prize, Andy Lam Wei Tie. From the Diploma in Business Administration course, the Mandom Corporation Silver Medal Award is awarded to Jaiselin Ong Tia Lin. The Jumbo Group Gold Medal is awarded to Tio Hui Jia. The diplo from the Diploma in Business Innovation and Design course, the Blue Can Silver Medal is awarded to Tanya E. K. Lin. The Blue Can Gold Medal is awarded to Leong Chi Ching. From the Diploma in International Business course, the Maple Tree Silver Medal is awarded to Liao Chong Zhe. The Maple Tree Gold Medal is awarded to Muhammad Akid bin Abdul Rahim. That concludes the presentation of course medals. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad Farhat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Giving the valedictory speech this afternoon is Rukoya Binte Mazlan, a graduate of the diploma course in business administration. May I now call Rukoya to deliver the farewell address on behalf of the new graduates. Rukoya, please. A very good afternoon to our guest speaker, Mr. Fahan Firdaos, Principal and CEO, Mr. So Waiwa, lecturers, parents, and the graduating batch of 2018. Has it ever occurred to you that graduation day is a bit like looking into a kaleidoscope? One full of pictures jumbled up together of both good and bad memories some of which with our friends and grieved in our hearts. Some of days where we cry late at night trying to complete projects. And some of the first day you stepped into SP. Three years ago, we were all seated in this same convention center, 
as freshies, screaming cheers at the top of our lungs, representing our various diplomas. Now, three years later, we are sitting in the same convention center, but as graduates, and we scream, we've graduated. A big part of my three-year journey here in SP was taken up by community service. It is my passion for many reasons, but the biggest being my younger brother. My younger brother suffers from severe autism and my family and I struggle a lot trying to communicate with him because he cannot talk. To put it simply, it's like taking care of a newborn. All they can do is cry, but for our case, he's 18 years old and he has the strength to fight and push you away. However, for someone that had to struggle silently with his disability, he taught me how to care unconditionally and how to work with people with different needs. It was also through community service that I learned how to meet people from all walks of life and get to know their stories and perspectives. And that has really taught me to appreciate the diversity of character and opinions that we have here. As we all know, poly life was never smooth sailing and we faced multiple adversities. We might not have all traveled the same road or encountered the same twists and turns, but look at where we're all at now, the same destination. There's an African proverb that goes, if you want to walk far, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk together. As cliche as it might sound, I strongly believe in this. But we cannot forget the people who have been there to pave our roads to success. So thank you, school leaders and lecturers, for your constant guidance and support. And thank you for the $10 that we receive each semester because our pizza parties were a great pick-me-up amidst the semester madness. Thank you to my friends who've been there through my ups and my downs. I know maybe sometimes or a lot of times I can be a little hard to handle. And of course, to my parents. I want to thank the both of you from the bottom of my heart for being my role model. You've taught me that no obstacle in life is insurmountable. And I thank you for all the prayers that you wake up to in the wee hours of the night to pray for my success. With that, my kaleidoscope has indeed been very colourful and I wish the same for you too. Congratulations, Batch of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Rokoya. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduation ceremony is now adjourned. May I invite all to stand? The procession groups will now leave the convention hall. Patients, please join us for the tea reception at the plaza outside the convention center. May I invite parents and guests to leave the convention center first. Please ensure that you have all your belongings. Have a pleasant day. <laughs>